Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Yes. Question mark? Yes, Question I'm sorry. Mark? I'm sorry. I was just thinking the two things I love are chocolate and calling out hypocrisy, and I'm all out of chocolate. <laughs> We can fix that. I can go get you some. So. Uh, we're going to talk about this new teaser for phase four of the MCU and how they have it narrated by Stan Lee, which sounds fine until you realize where the narration came from. The narration was actually a video that Marvel shot looked like their offices or Stanley's house or something back in 2017 uh, to apparently push back against Comicsgate. They're using that audio, uh, you know, cutting it up, rearranging it, and now it's it's part of this, this trailer uh, pushing for the next phase of the MCU. So it's a low key slap to people they think were against them or, you know, call them out that most people wouldn't know, notice unless you were, you know, the people they were slapping down. Yeah, this is, uh, what, what, what do they call it? A dog whistle? Yeah, oh yeah. A dog whistle? Is mm -hmm. that what this is? <gasps> Are they all right? Oh my god. Uh yeah, this is this is about preemptively calling fans awful people if they don't like phase four of the MCU, which a lot of people are referring to as the MCU. I was just gonna say, they're not gonna probably like it because it's the M they're calling it the MCU. And it's it's really interesting too if you watch this trailer that they have this build up like, you know, escapism. We all escape from the real world by going to the movies. But the thing is, is the video this was taken from was anything but escapism. It was dragging out poor, at, at that point in time, he was 93 years old, mm -hmm. poor 93 year old Stan Lee to slap down your Twitter enemies. And you don't even know what they told him. Cause I, I've seen right. other actors before, or they, they were like, oh, I'm gonna call you out and I'm gonna tell you you're a bunch of crap. But then when you find out later, they weren't given all the facts. They were given a one version of it, which is usually their skewed version of it. And if they had the facts incompletely, they might not have said what they said. And the, the really disgusting thing about this is a lot of the same people who are like, you show them, Stan, you're the man. Uh, they jumped on the bandwagon when people were, were posthumously yes. attacking him, attacking his character, accusing him of sexual misconduct at 90 some years mm -hmm. old. You know, uh, so Stan Lee got got basically got me too right before his death. And this controversy went on for a while. And then we had a lot of news outlets being like, we shouldn't celebrate Stan Lee at all because he was a horrible person. Trash is going to be trash. And I'm sorry. You'd think that Marvel would try to be better. You would think they but would. But we know that they won't. Um, this is Disney, though. They they do this with Walt Disney. They cherry pick. You know, I mean, how many times have we heard to all who come to this happy place? Oh, they want to use well, that. But if yeah. they could find a way to bury everything else and think is problematic about him, they would do it. Yes. Yeah, so this is what what's going to happen. I think Stan is going to get the Walt treatment where they're going to selectively cherry pick whatever quote supports whatever they're doing uh, with Marvel at that point in time, even if it's completely out of context, even if the audio is edited like this audio was. Um, and this is a preemptive slap. So get ready for it, guys. It's You're not going to be allowed to dislike anything coming out of the MCU. Mm hmm all right, so before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 187,000 subs, almost 188. Uh, crawling to 200, so hit that that sub button if you haven't done so already. Uh, we did take a day off. We actually took a day well, off. Well, kind of. I still worked. <laughs> quarters of the day. Kind of, kind of, sort of uh, took a day off. I just worked off. on the blog instead. Uh, I was working on gaming videos yesterday. That's what I was doing. Um, but we kind of, sort of, had an evening off. That doesn't we happen. We had a few early. hours off. <laughs> that doesn't, that's basically our life. We have a few hours off. Anyway, uh, so we wake up uh, first thing Monday morning and, uh, you know, the media just... I sent this over to you. Well, you caught you caught the the comments. I actually didn't watch the video part. I only was covering the fact that they had announcements for four movies for Phase Four. They're adding to the slate with some dates, and they have um, Black Pan Panther Two. It's like uh, I forget what they're calling it Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever. Yeah. Um, they they have Captain Marvel Two, but they're calling it the Marvels. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get Ms. Marvel. And yeah, Miss Marvel, Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Monica Rambeau, and only one of those people actually like, and that was Monica <laughs> Rambeau. Um, Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel were two examples of comics that they kept trying to make happen and trying yeah. to make popular. People did not want them. They did not like them. They were self-inserts, and they kept pushing it. And if you didn't love it, it's because you're a bad person, not just because maybe, you know, their book was shitty. So we have Captain Marvel 2, I mean Marvels. We have, uh, there was Ant-Man and the Wasp that, uh, was it Quantumania? Yeah. And then there's um, Gu Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is a creative title that is. Quantumania sounds like a video game. 
to me, it sounds like a, you know, like a, like a stupid song, like a, or like a club. I'm going down to Quantum Mania. Oh my God. Let's boogie. <laughs> Let's boogie. Um, yeah. So the thing about this trailer, again, this is sort of an overview and they try to, to give you, yeah, th these are all quotes from Stan Lee. Um, and they're out of context. They took a lot of this from this thing he did in 2017. Again, but they're using all these clips that give you the feels. Like, if you love our yeah. characters, here's the comments. Oh, love. It's all about love. Yeah. Uh, so what he actually said, and they're trying to make it like we're part of one big family. This is what he actually said. He said, Marvel has always been and will always be a reflection of the world outside your window. No one was arguing that. No. So what they took is that world may change and evolve, but the one thing that will never change is... And he went on to say, the way we tell our stories of heroism, those stories have room for everyone, regardless of race, gender, religion, or color of skin. Which is what people in Comics Gate were saying. They didn't have a problem with that. No. And this is a, this is a very complicated situation. I'm going to try to distill it down for uh, five-year-olds listening. Um, it There's five-year-olds listening. Your pa parents <laughs> you shouldn't be listening off. to this. Uh, but yeah, Comics Gate's a very complicated situation. And it, it overlaps with... Uh, Marvel's stupid business decisions. And I'm not agreeing with everything everyone has said to comic book creators. No, but don't agree with all um, to me, as an armchair observer, it looked like a lot of passing the buck. Uh, Marvel did not take responsibility for their own stupid actions. And instead, they they went out and started to attack fans, attack retailers. Yeah, it, could, it wasn't because they were making poor choices. It wasn't because they kept pushing books no one wanted. And when then people didn't buy those books, they called them names and tried to push the books again. Like, well, we give you a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. Um, it wasn't because they kept taking characters that existed and making counterparts, gender bent counterparts or new characters that no one wanted or changing existing characters in ways no one wanted. It wasn't because of that no no it's because if you didn't like it it's because you're an istophobe and a terrible person and it would not possibly be their fault yeah so they go through and they, they show all the warm all the warm fuzzies remember marvel remember marvel but then they're like we go to escape escape what we go to escape you don't let us escape it to get lost in the story nope not allowed to uh and it's basically saying like come back to marvel to share moments Come back to Marvel, everybody. Marvel, Marvel's here for you. But the thing You're is, you're not allowed is, to, to to escape. No, and so it looks. This whole thing. This is a. This is PR. This is marketing. This is get you in the field so you spend money. Yeah, they're showing you all these great moments from Marvel movies past. They're using a narration. The ones you liked. Uh, by Stan Lee to be like, out oh my context. god, guys. Yep, out of context to be like, Marvel's great. Marvel's always going to be here for you guys, but it might have to change. It might have to change, but it's still great. It still loves you. And if you don't Marvel like changes, because not because you, you know, it's not what we, we've always been. It's because you, you are a bad person. But we'll talk about the fact that they're trying to get you to go to theaters again. Yeah. And here's the problem with that. People want to go to the theaters for escapism. They want to escape the crap that they're dealing with every day. They want to escape their life. The problem is these new things coming out from Disney and Marvel and other studios are so full of agenda-driven bullshit that even, you know, and, and it's not that you, I disagree with that, you know, people should be treated equally. Not at all. I don't disagree with that in one, any way, shape, or form. It's just the fact that, you know, unlike things like The Mandalorian where they just did it, you know, organically or things like Dragon Prince or something like that where they just did it organically and they had diversity that was in there. Good characters, good story, happen to be diverse. They keep shoving this shit down your throat. And if you don't like it, it's because you're a terrible person. People want to get away from it. They want a good story that's not about pushing shit down their throat. Yeah, and that's that's the issue. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Comics Gate situation. And and again, you know... We're uh, not part of Comics Gate. No, um, we've never claimed to be. People try to lump us in with... If you're critical of the mainstream comic book industry at all, they consider you Comics Gate. Right. We agree um, with some things. We disagree with others. Um, we ourselves do not identify as Comics Gate. But that doesn't mean we can't have a take on it. And we're going to have a take Right. On. We're going to have a take on it. Because uh, I, I was actually there ground zero before it was even called Comics Gate. Well, you got in trouble. You didn't even know why. Yeah. Uh, weirdly enough. Um, oh, yeah. It's a Fantastic Four. Forgot yeah. to mention that. Fantastic Four is coming back, guys. Yeah. Shocker surprise. Wonder why no one called that. Oh, wait. So this is part of what got me in trouble. Actually, this guy, I did get him in trouble. Uh, 2017, this is when the year that shit hit the fan. Um, I had a pretty good authority that Fox was going to do. Well, I didn't know about the Fox deal, but Disney was going to do whatever it needed to do to get Fantastic Four 
and the X-Men away from Fox. Yes. So I had it on pretty good authority again, having worked in and around the Disney company. We have people come to us on occasion that there was something going on with the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. And uh, this is in 2017. I called it on a blog that I no longer uh, work on. We built it though. We built. created it and got taken away from us, but yeah. And oh my God, so many people threw so much shit at me for saying that, you know, they were working on a deal to get the Fantastic Four back, that we were going to see the Fantastic Four and the X-Men in the MCU after Endgame. Oh, wasn't that Guaranteed. like right after you got in trouble for saying Marvel numbers were, yes. were, were bad and we should be worried and then you got called an idiot travel blogger? For yeah. People who didn't even bother looking into you to find out that you were a comics person? Yeah. So this is another one of those, uh, you know, suck a peach moments. Um, you that, may have your moment. Go ahead. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I got in all kinds of, all kinds of trouble for this. Uh, you know, Marvel Comics, again, having not worked... Uh, in comics for a couple of years at that point, mainstream comics for a couple of years, I was kind of out of touch with what was going on. I didn't. We weren't involved in any no, of the no, drama. No. We were just out there doing our own thing. No, the last Disney comics I worked on, I think it was 2015, 2016. And Disney comics are a world removed from uh, Marvel and DC, right. the direct market. The books I, I was working on at the time, like I was working on Fanagraphics, Don Rosa stuff, and uh, some IDW stuff. I wasn't paying attention to what was going on at Marvel and DC. I really didn't care. I was more interested in uh, the book market, the YA well, that, market. That we were doing thing. theme park stuff. Yeah, so we were doing theme park stuff. Wasn't paying attention. So we saw that the Marvel numbers were dropping in 2017 and i was just like what's up with that wow this is so then i started to look into it and i was like wow well they made some really stupid decisions you know they swapped out all the main characters when the mcu was at the peak of its popularity they decided that was the time to get rid of tony stark and get rid of steve oh, and rogers do, and uh, you know stunts like captain marvel's and or captain america's a nazi that kind of surprised Nazi. Yeah. You know, that's when they started. That's when they started oh yeah that was stunts. 2017 yeah, yeah they made captain america a nazi and the sales dropped off a cliff right? Uh, it was so bad and the retailers were revolting. There were some skeezy business practices too. It wasn't just like, you know, they were making bad, just bad editorial decisions. Like this is still this, one of the stupidest things Marvel's ever done, but they were also doing some, some very, uh, uh, dumb business decisions with, uh, multiple covers, lenticular mm -hmm. covers, uh, you know, strong arming retailers, all this crazy shit. And it came to a head in 2017. Now the ball started rolling as I understand it in 2014, 2015, but 2017 is really when Marvel started to feel the pinch. And the, the fans started calling them out, too. And the retailers yeah. did, too. Fans and retailers were calling them out. They're like, what the hell are you doing? We're getting stuck with a bunch of books we can't sell. Why are you changing characters? Why, why is Iceman gay suddenly when there's zero indication ever in his entire history for decades that he's gay, but now he's gay. But now, because people, that fans, long time fans called that out. It's not because it was a really questionable decision, or they could have just made new characters because you know that would be more respectful to both gay people and the characters. No, no, it's because you're 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 homophobic. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not it's not our fault that we aren't making bad decisions. It's because you're just all you know beneath us and 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 are istophobes that you don't understand it. So then instead of like you know saying okay this isn't working, maybe we should like give the customers what they want, or maybe maybe you know walk it back a bit and maybe make some new characters or some different things. No, 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 no. They just doubled down on shitting on the fans. Yeah. Um, it so a Disney move. It was a very Disney move. Yeah. And it, it felt like it was Marvel editorial freaking out. We saw that they were getting very combative with YouTubers. Uh, we saw that they were getting combative with media outlets that weren't towing the line. We had a lot of friendly media outlets. Uh, I would say like Newsarama and those, those sort of sites we had. Um, you know, outlets that didn't usually weigh in on comics like The Atlantic and Polygon weighing in on the situation, uh, you know, jumping at the opportunity to tie comic books to Gamergate because everything's, everything's Gamergate. Well, then, then, then now everything's Comicsgate. Now everything's Comicsgate. But it ended, and then Gamergate again. And then Gamergate again, right? Um, so it ended with Axel Alonso, the editor-in-chief who greenlit a lot of these decisions, uh, getting gone. And I think he had a, a non-disclosure. They bought his contract out or something because he had to keep his mouth shut for years. Now he's kind of sort of saying stuff, but he's working for some other company. But he got gone. And then they brought in C.B. Sobolski, who was a, a pretty legit comic book fan. But then immediately people started attacking him because when he was in Japan, he used a Japanese pen name because uh, he was afraid that people wouldn't buy comics from you know, an English sounding. Yeah, but Western there's a reason author. why. It, it, I mean, it's a, actually, uh, he has a good reason for doing it. I'm not saying I can do what he did. I'm just saying I can understand why he did that because he, he's not wrong. He would have had trouble. Yeah. I mean, what can they say? Uh, Stan Lee's name was actually Stan Lieber. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, right, right. A lot of people change their names or use pen names from time to time. Whoopie ding dong. Yeah, so, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. They made it a big deal because I think they were salty that Disney might have put this guy in because this guy did have ties to Disney Publishing. Anyway, it, it blew up in 2017. So they put this video up with Stan Lee. They basically filmed it on a cell phone and they they put this video up with Stan Lee. It was about a minute long. Basically, Stan Lee's like, I, I hate bigots and I don't like bigotry. We don't either. Marvel's inclusive. Look, Marvel Comics, this is what kills me about this. Everybody's going about how inclusive they are Marvel Com- like have you never read fucking Marvel comics they've ever? always they've been for years they have been for years the X-Men one of the most diverse superhero groups and I've said it time and time again I'm gonna say it again when I started reading comics Monica Rambeau was the boss of the Avengers and Storm was the boss of the X-Men we had two black women in the mm-hmm. 1980s leading the two most popular teams yes and no one thought of it and nobody thought anything of it you know, um, I had a Storm action figure as a kid. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just I, like this whole idea that it's just it's been recently invented because all the bigots hate women, hate minorities, hate whatever, is a load of shit. And I really am tired of them keep running with this. And the whole thing is, is because they want these new people want to set themselves up as the ones who broke the glass ceiling and who are the ones who are the, who have done all this stuff. You didn't do it. Stop pissing on legacies of people who actually did it. Well, that's, that's what's so disgusting about this, right? So they trot Stanley out a little more than a year before he dies. And they do this video. And now they're, they're using him to promote characters that he did not create for the most part. Mm-hmm. Or vastly altered versions of characters he created. This is not Stan's work, but they're going to use him now to promote this new phase of the, the Marvel Universe. But right after he died, all these media outlets were slamming on Stan Lee. They're like, oh my God, at 93 years old, he was creeping on nurses. And uh, you know, I don't know if any of this has been proven or not, but they wasted no time. And there were comic book professionals. There were people actually working for Marvel, if I remember correctly, who were taking a shit on Stan well, Lee on Twitter. They were trying to get, you know, woke points, yeah. high fives, you know, uh, likes on, on Twitter. Yeah. And now they want to use Stan to promote characters that he had no hand in. And again, I... I don't think he knew what was going on. They're probably like, Stan, Stan, the Nazis and the bigots and the racists are trying to take over comics. Well, right. that's horrible. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what makes you so mad. It's because I am 100% sure he was not told what was actually going yeah. on. And people are actually saying, are there shitty people and that are probably like, you know, extremists in Comics Gate? Yes, I'm sure there are. Are there shitty people who are extremists on Twitter or on the left or on the side of Marvel? I am 100% sure there are. So, you know, most people fall in the middle. And then he comes out there and just attacks everyone because that's what he's being told. Of course, he's like, oh, my God, I have to say something. This is bullshit. Well, yeah, how was it presented to him? Yeah, well, that's just it. Because, again, you know, guys like Stan Lee, you know, 93 years old, he's probably not hanging out on Twitter most of the time. And if you listen to the media, the media immediately sided with the comic book pros because, again, they, they have a cozy relationship. A lot of people working in media outlets that cover comics, they want to work in comics. Well, they're all they friends. friends. They're all, they're all friends. That's yeah. why you see things yeah. come out. Everybody, everybody's, like, pandering. They're always doing these hit pieces with, with you know, flimsy, you know, evidence and things like that because they're all working together and real quick i want to point out when they brought out the marvels you know it immediately twitter started of all the movies they mentioned including black panther 2 they went on to the marvels and they went on to twitter and they started they started you know white knighting for that movie so hard oh my god i'm so excited it's gonna be the best movie ever and everything else because it's the marvels and then it got trending now you tell me that that is not legit that is fake bullshit marvel you know, ma- or massaging Twitter. And, Marvel massaging Twitter. And let's be let's, let's bring this up again too. Captain Marvel two, she's so shit that they had to bring in Ms. Marvel and Monica Rambeau just to carry the damn movie. Yeah, I know, right? They had to call it the Marvels because Carol because Brie Larson, Carol Danvers, wasn't strong enough for the first time. And if you remember when that movie came out, people were like, eh, about that movie, and then they immediately called you names. You didn't like it. Went up to Twitter, white knighted to get it trending all the time. Went and had Rotten Tomatoes and places like that where they had leverage, changed the rules to to you know hold it, uphold it, and then started a fight against Alita for no damn reason instead of like hey two girl power movies woohoo no because what they're trying to do with with captain marvel is they're trying they're forcing her they're trying to make her to stick they want her to be the face of the marvel universe they want people to think oh they call it the marvel universe because of captain marvel 
Right. You know, because of Ms. Marvel. The it's, new Captain America, Iron Man, you know, whoever's in charge. And organically, she has never stuck. The comics have not stuck. Uh, now, it's so weird. I brought. I don't know if I brought this up before or not, but they have vintage Kenner-style action figures coming out mm -hmm. of, of classic Marvel characters. And they have a Carol Danvers figure. They don't call her Captain Marvel. They call her Carol Danvers. And she's wearing her 70s costume. And she, that figure looks pretty good, you know, but she was kind of a B-list character for years. I mean, she wasn't, I mean, they knocked her on her ass. Rogue took her powers. That's what I was waiting for. And she was out of the picture for a long time. She was never a major character in the Marvel Comics universe until 2015 when they tried to reboot her again and again and again. And make and her again. their way. And because she's so, you know, and back then, I'm sorry, the flavor of the time was either women or lesbians. So they had to push that. And I'm yeah. sorry, you can get pissed all you want. That's the truth. There is, you know, the, you know, we need a hero and all that. We had the women thing first. And that, that after that, it was the LGBTQ plus mostly lesbians. Because don't you know, diversity just means lesbians. Um, for years, that was going on. It's it, You have LGBTQ plus, but it just mostly was the L. And, you know, they were pushing that, you Take know. The yeah, I mean, that's what that's what it was. I mean, I feel bad for everybody else who was, you know, included in that because it didn't matter. It was all about lesbians. And then they had to push that forward. And that's what they were doing with the comic and all this crap. And then they're like, everybody wants Mona or, or Maria Rambo and Carol Danvers to be a couple and all this other shit. Well, I'm not everybody. Twitter. Far left Twitter. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's stupid. And now they're already starting this campaign that to artificially inflate it. Of all the titles they mentioned, immediately went to the Marvels and they're already starting a PR campaign to inflate that movie. I know what's going to happen with the Fantastic Four because I've heard rumors about Fantastic Four that they're basically... Um, they got stuck in the quantum realm or something back in the 60s. So we're going to have like the, the original like 60s. They're going to make them a bunch of doofy ass, uh, stupid characters that come to the modern age and they have to get schooled on. Reed Richards is going to be a misogynist. Sue Storm is going to be baking cookies in the kitchen. You know, and they're going to be, uh, you watch. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to well, do. Well, that makes sense because Ant-Man and the Wasp, yeah. Quantumania is probably where they pull out the Fantastic Four from that. So it's just, yeah, that that, that makes sense. Actually. Blast from I the past. doing that, yeah. Blast from the past with superpowers is what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to have to get schooled on being modern. You know, what means to be a man in today's world. So basically with Captain America. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, you know, more overt because that yeah, was that was too that was too too subtle. Yeah, it was too subtle. That was ten plus years ago. So now now we gotta be like, read your toxic. You're, yeah, you gotta you know. change. It's all gonna be about the lessons they learn because you know when you want to go to the theater escape just to watch more people get put down by Twitter because <laughs> that's what it's gonna be. Go ahead, what are you say? Uh, no, I was gonna say that that's the thing. Like they're they're preemptively like you go to the movies to escape. You know, but by the way, by the way, we're one big happy Marvel family. Come back to Marvel, guys. So I got to wonder if this isn't a reaction to, you know, all the talk going on about how people are concerned about the future of the MCU because mm -hmm. all the likable characters are dead or old or out well, of the picture. A lot of people have said after the 10 years of phase one through three, it wrapped up with Endgame and they kind of are out. They're like, I'm not investing 10 more years. Yeah. yeah. They, they kept talking about burnout. Yeah. Well, how the hell are you not burning people out? It's like every it's like few months, there's another stupid Marvel movie, and then they're going to shoehorn shows into Disney Plus, and the shows have been going down. Like WandaVision was doing okay, and then Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't care how you try to spin it, they, that was very agenda e too, by the way. They um, it the, it didn't do well anywhere near as well as WandaVision, and I'm sorry if you don't want to hear that, but that's the that's the case. And now we know we're going to Captain uh, America four, but it's going to be Sam, which I have no problem with. Um, I like, I like both characters. I just think that they're, it's going to be all about agenda. They made it all about agenda in the last episode of the, of the show. Yeah. It could have just been like a, a, almost like a buddy cop movie and they decided to, you know, I don't know. And again, that was another reason why, look, there's no concrete proof. I mean, the, the numbers did drop off on it. They did. Uh, some people were saying that they know, like when they got to the politics in the second episode, that's when it dropped off. I, I don't know if you can actually prove. I don't know if you can prove that. I have no idea. No, but I, we do know the numbers were nowhere near what they were for one division. Right, and I think it just it was. I personally just thought it was a boring show. I mean, I watched one episode. And I'm like, this is boring as hell. Like, I'm just not interested. And I, I, I wasn't like. Like, oh my God, I'm so offended because no. blah, blah, blah. it's like, no, I'm just like, I'm bored. I don't I have time to watch boring stuff. Until like the last episode. Then I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. You know, sorry, mom. Yeah. I was like, here we go. 
Yeah. Um, but th- th- no one, I think they didn't like that. And it's, if that's indicative of phase four, we got some issues to worry about because people aren't aren't liking it because what's going to happen is it's not going to be about good stories. It's going to be about, well, now we're going to hit you over the head with our lessons and you're going to, you're going to like it. You're going to take it because Stan said, out yeah, of context. except Stan didn't say, and like I said, they're using Stan to promote characters for the most part. He didn't create, you know, or, or they're, they're going to alter them to the point of being unrecognizable. Like the Eternals, they're, they're changing them drastically from the comics. And uh, Stan did not have a hand in that. But he's useful now. He's useful. Right, after he's gone. Now he can't um, speak up for himself. I uh, just think it's it, the whole thing's messed up because they're basically trying to put him in there to remind, oh, we're, this is uplifting with the scenes you love, the characters you love. Um, get you all, know, get all oh, Marvel, 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 and then here's Stan saying, you know, well, you know these 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 positive things, but people don't know what con- the context they were in. Yeah. And also the fact is they're just trying to manipulate you to go to the movies because they know yeah. they have a problem because people are not gonna probably go. Yeah, that's exactly what's what's going on. This is this is a, a PR spin, and look, I think a lot of people are gonna fall for it. All it's gonna take though are a couple of the movies to to land with a thud. Uh, and people would be like, and they push agenda too hard. They're gonna. You're gonna lose half your audience. Boom. Yeah. You know, right? mean, it's just stupid. Yeah. Um, just make good characters and good movies. It's not that hard. It is. It is current year because everybody is hyper obsessed with politics. Well, no matter what you do, someone's gonna get pissed. So just do yeah. you know, do something good and, and then do they what get makes pissed. money. Who's gonna who, please the larger amount of people? Let's do it that way. You're gonna want to please the larger group of people. And if you stay in the middle and you stay like you have been, you, there's a course you have been doing for all those you know phase one through three. You'll probably be okay if you start shoehorning characters like okay, like the game. We had the the Avengers game. They tried to put Ms. Marvel in there, and the game did shit. Yeah, they made her kind of front and center, and yeah, and that, that's the thing. They're they're trying to push these characters that organically we've seen comic book by. And it's not, they can't just say it's comic book fans now. Gamers, mainstream gamers who don't read the comics are like, God, she's annoying. And the, no, yeah. I mean to be fair, they said there's lots of problems with that. Game. Yeah, there it wasn't were lots just of problems. Her, so yeah. I'm not going to say it was all her because that was that would not be a fair statement. But what I'm saying is, you know, you're you're, you're you need to stay the course and you need to go with what works. And for whatever reason, Marvel comics. Uh, Marvel Studios, they will not listen because it's going to be their way or the highway because the people in charge uh, are, are personally making themselves in the com- They're doing self-inserts in these, car- these characters in the comics and they don't want to hear or people don't want them. That is not an option. The option is you're going to love it or we're going to call you names. That doesn't make you money. How about you just do good characters that appeal to a lot of people and then go from there? Well, Disney is going to tell you what you want. They're going to tell you what you want. Well, it keeps biting them in the ass. It does. So good luck with that. I guess that's the only thing I have to say. Like, I can't, I honestly am so, I mean, I'm talking about this, but I'm not even really actually angry. I'm more angry that they're dragging out Stan Lee out of context now to use him as a marketing tool. Um, but what happens to the MCU? I don't give a shit. I, I am checked out. I just assume at this point that Disney is going to fuck it up. Somehow. Well, see, for me, I do get angry because I have, I have a huge problem with manipulation and hypocrisy. I, I cannot stand for it. I just can't. And that's all I'm seeing here. Yeah, I just don't. I, that's it. This, this is, again, this is you know, using using Stan Lee when it's convenient for them, using his words out of context, uh, trying to manipulate the audience. I'm so know. sad. I'm, I'm kind of mad and sad because I actually kind of was like, okay, there's a couple movies here I do want to see. And now I'm kind of like, do I even want to give them money? Because what they did was shit. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just picking and choosing. I, I liked it's WandaVision. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what this is. We've got like, your Marvel. What we, you going to do, fanboys? We got your money. We got the money. Fuck off. Sorry, Mom. That's what this is. No, no, no. That's me back to them. Yeah. We got the money. Yeah. <laughs> so. But no, this is what this is. Like with the com- We see this with the current generation of comic book creators and stuff, too, and, and game developers and anybody that comes into a warm seat. You know, when something's already been built... And we have new people come in. They take for granted that position. They're like, well, we got it, fanboys. And you don't. I, think, neener, neener, I neener, honestly neener. think it's a generational thing. Yeah. And I don't want to throw insult, but millennials, not all of you, the, the ones that are like the, you know, the ones that everybody, you know, that you think of when you hear millennial, I'm talking to you. We watched, side note, okay, instead of watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I did not watch it. You watched it. I watched one episode. Mm-hmm. I was basically out. I'm like, this is boring as hell. I'm not wasting my time. Uh, we watched back-to-back uh documentaries i was i would call it like dumbass documentaries last night we first we watched one on we work mm-hmm. and then we watched one on fire festival and we're sitting there watching this like how why are people falling for this shit and then 
it's obvious why they're fun. They want to be told that they're the best. They're the center of the universe. Yes. We're all in this together. Socialism and everything. We're all in this together. Everybody should be equal. But then they all say, but then they get them in interviews. But he told me I was going to be a millionaire. But I thought you wanted to have, just share everything and be equal. As long as you're the one that gets to be elevated. Yeah, it's it's a big sham. It wasn't sustainable. But that that is the mindset I think of a lot of these people that that get into comics now. They're like, I've got the influence. It's all right. influencer mindset. Right. I you didn't build it, but I'm here now, bitches. Yeah. So I'm gonna do what I want. You're gonna have to like it. And then when people don't like it, it's like they don't understand that they think it's a personal attack on themselves. Yes. Yeah. Because they're inserting themselves into it. So if you don't like that character, you don't like them. Well, actually, if you're a whiny bitch like the character, we probably don't like you either. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? I don't know if it's because we're, we're Gen X or what, but we're just like sitting back watching this like, why would they even fall for this shit? I'm just, and then they're calling it out flat out that it's this millennial mindset. And that doesn't mean everyone because there's a lot of millennials who aren't like that. Well, the, the people that they interviewed on the WeWork documentary actually was a millennial and they, they, they were calling out. They're like, it's basically this generation wants to be told they're the best, they're awesome. They invented whatever. everything. Yeah. They need a cause. Even if the cause has already been over and done with and it's already been, you know, beaten and destroyed, they're going to dig it back up, put it back up, cause, you know, division and, and shit all over again just so they can destroy it again and say it was them. Zo it's, zombie it's cause. The Zo zombie cause. Zo zombie activism. They're, okay, that's what we're going to call it. Zombie activism. Zactivism. I don't know what you're we're, we're gonna wrap that. We're gonna wrap this up though. But yeah, yes. I, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. But uh, there we go, guys. They're digging up uh, Stanley. Speaking of and activism, and activism, and uh, editing his words to use them against you. So they zombified Stanley to yeah to activate to use activism to try to tell you that you have to see these movies. If you don't, you're you're a shitty person. That's right, and it's gonna get worse, guys. If if uh, there's backlash to movies like the Eternals or the Marvels or whatever. Uh, we're we're waiting. It's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly. And really, all that matters at the end of the day is the box office take. Mm -hmm. You know, or well, if it's on Disney Plus, they can just hide it. But uh, we'll, well see. they're gonna. They keep saying they're not gonna do that here soon. So, all right, we're gonna see if the uh, the uh, Phase Four is a four or a mulligan. You know, we'll they're see. gonna strike out here. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.